Hi, and welcome back to the channel. We're continuing The Witcher. This is episode four of season one, and it's called Of Banquets, Bastards, and Burials. So that sounds interesting at least, but before we get into the episode itself and The Witcher overall, we have a little something to uh, to say about some, some real life stuff. Um, yeah, I'll let you do it. Yeah. Um... As some of you guys know, I went to um, defend my master thesis and it went well and now I'm done. <laughs> so we can hopefully spend a little bit more time the next couple of months uh, doing this. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yes. And the reason why you're saying the next couple of months is because we are going on a little journey, you could say, in a couple of months. Uh, but we'll get to that at some point and tell you about it. We're going to be gone for a little while, but we'll still do some videos and some new stuff. And we will keep you guys updated at no, least. That's not my, what I meant. Sure. Okay, but yeah, I just wanted to say it. A anyway, um, it's just been so nice uh, to have all this support from you guys. Yeah, um, it's meant a lot to me, especially yeah. in those times where I've been so stressed out that I couldn't sleep at night and just waking up in full panic mode and just um <laughs> did i forget something <laughs> stuff like that yeah so. yeah yeah but uh but now you did it and you did it really well um if i can say so she did he doesn't uh, know <laughs> it went really well either way now we're gonna be watching the witcher and on the last one we got um a story with a striga and king faultist and that ended up um, going, you know, the way that Faultest wanted it to go, that the princess could survive, and Geralt was, was able to do that. Uh, and then we got the stuff with Yennefer. She went through her um, enchantments, so it's going to be real interesting to see where she's going to go from now. Uh, and she might be going to, to Eden and not... Nilfgaard, even though um, Stregobor and others wanted her to go to, go to Nilfgaard. And then we got Ciri, which it end, we got a very short sequence with Ciri at the end. And what was the name of the forest? That... Broculon. Broculon Forests. So I'm expecting for us to, uh, for them to go into way more uh, about that as well. And if you're wondering why I'm wearing a dinosaur, pink fluffy dinosaur is because I've been so cold all day um, and I have I have really had a hard time actually getting uh, the warmth <laughs> back in my body um, so yeah I just went all out and why not and it's... went for the pink dinosaur yeah and if you notice that I am uh, dabbing my eye a lot it's because uh, my right eye apparently is allergic to the eyeshadow I'm wearing so um that's great stuff, man. It's um <laughs> great stuff. Yeah, great stuff. Yeah, it's just um pouring out of it. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you see, I'm I'm dabbing my eye, and if I suddenly just give up and just full on cry, but only on one eye, you know why? It's just uh, yeah, yeah. It might not be because of what's happening. Uh, no, episode, it's just uh, <laughs> it's a a, a, a physical uh, reaction to yeah. stuff. So yes, yes. All right. Um, as always, you can. Watch our full-length reactions on our Patreon page, where you can find full-length reactions to all the other shows that we are doing as well. But let's get into it. If this thing wants to... There's a, book. Go. There's a book in the mm. way. <laughs> it's a Witcher book, funnily enough. All right, there we go. Another long and pretty action-filled episode of The Witcher. Um, the way that we're going to do this uh, discussion afterwards is... Uh, First off, we're going to talk about the episode um, in itself and not we're not going to relate it that much to any of the stuff that happens in the books or the games or any of our prior knowledge. So we're just going to talk about the episode. And after that, we'll get into some of the other stuff as well with the, the books and the games and spoilers and, and so forth. But I enjoyed this episode, at least. Um, I, I knew of it beforehand, so so I knew what was coming and and what really went down, especially in Geralt's storyline. That was pretty damn close to what I um, what I envisioned, what I remember from the story. And and then we got a little bit of Yennefer and and a little bit of Ciri as well. But it was mostly the the Geralt storyline in in this one at least at uh, in Sintra. 
And if I had to put a like an overall theme just here from from the get go, and what kind of binds these three stories in a way, um, destiny, this, destiny, and maybe also being a woman. I could see some of those themes going through um, in, Ga- yeah. in, in in Geralt's storyline, just to talk this, the stuff that uh, Kalantha she talked about. Then we got uh, in Yennefer's storyline the, the little speech she had there on the beach uh, at the end, um, where she was talking to the the dead uh, the dead baby, which I, I actually really liked that scene. Um, yeah, it I showed know. a lot of vulner- vulnerability in her character, um, which I I like seeing, uh, especially with Yen. Yeah, <laughs> she can be so damn mean. stern and, and stuff. But yeah, we've talked about that. Uh, and then in series um, storyline, there didn't there wasn't like any. They didn't talk about it in the same way, but the way that I I, I saw the theme in that storyline was the fact that all of the uh, elves, in, dryads, dryads, yeah, sorry, dry, all the dryads in 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 the forest, they were women, and they are, yeah, and they are, yeah. So so that's at least I saw a bit of a theme there. Yeah, definitely. Mm. And I'm pretty sure they wrote in this part with Yennefer and I think it was a good call that you saw the the themes with the womanhood and stuff yeah 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 um because we don't know much about Yen but as you say it's very nice to get some um uh, more insight into Yennefer and who she is because there is uh definitely something going on with Yen yes um and all of this um vulnerability that she's kind of she's kind of showing it's um much more implied uh, from what i initially thought about yennefer mm-hmm. uh so i think it creates a little bit more warmth to her character and i have been really wanting that wanting that because i always felt like i needed something to uh relate to and i think this is very relatable and especially me as a woman Mm -hmm. there's a lot of things here that i relate to because well yes i mean the same boat really (laughs) except you can't do magic i can't do magic and i still have my (laughs) uterus so (laughs) thank god um (laughs) yeah but I really like the the way that the time jump there. I think that did a lot as well. Because if we had just you know followed her, like directly after the events of what happened in, in the last episode, where she was getting to be real cocky and being like, "I deserve this. I should get what I want," and all of that stuff. Um, if we had just continued down that path, we maybe wouldn't have gotten to that vulnerable part of her as as mm. quickly. You, we've seen her. We've seen her vulnerable side, of course, especially before um, she got turned into this uh, powerful sorceress. Um, but now, at least, we got to see immediately the like how this wasn't what she thought it was. It didn't turn out the way that yeah. she hoped. Like she yeah. was not going to be this all powerful, famous sorceress. Uh, she, who, yeah. Yeah. Who, who just, um, it's going to become famous all through the land and, and she's going to have power and everything. She's just more like, yeah, it didn't turn out the way I, I I wanted it to, and and holy shit, life is tough. Even even with all this power, life sucks. Yeah, because what she imagined probably was that she was going to be an advisor. She was going to be do powerful magic, and she was going to be like this mm. uh, all powerful being. And yeah. then she turns out to be a goddamn like babysitter almost. Like she yeah, had, yeah. had to uh, she had to help the king. Um, in political matters, matters and, and, and a lot of political shit going on and and i'm sure that can drive anyone insane like 30 years of politics back and forth and protecting an ungrateful sorry bitch like she was in this episode i think um, all of them is un- are ungrateful yeah, yeah i could imagine it's like you know the privilege that comes with uh being born into and, this shit yeah, and yeah being privileged in general <laughs> yeah 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 they, uh, they can probably all all of them can come off as being ungrateful, and uh, yeah, yeah. But it was it was interesting to see at least, um, and and 
whoa, that assassin dude that followed her. Uh, yeah. He was, he didn't say much. He didn't say anything, really. Um, he was good at throwing a knife, and he had some sort of insects, insect beasts creature with yeah. him that was uh, very efficient at killing, at least. Um, but, oh, that was nasty. Yeah, that was nasty. But Yen took care of that one, and the guy survived, at least. We might see him again, I don't know. Um, might just be an assassin, um, and that was done and yeah yeah but i just wanted to say that somebody mentioned in episode three that um this whole thing we learned with you have to take uh, you have to give some to make some mm. um with the flower to uh, uh what? To, to lift make, the, the to lift the rock yeah they then, you, to... then you had to lift the uh flower with her mm. and then lifting the rock and that was also kind of you had to give something very essential to you. Mm. Um, and for the womanhood is probably being able to bear a child. And then this sacrifice will make you all powerful. Mm. And I think it's a very nice, um, it was a very nice observation. Um, and they have done it very well. Uh, and the way they... The, the way they do these episodes with the, all the themes and the way they tie everything together. And I think, of course, there's something that some things they, they rewrite and uh, make differently. And, and often it serves a really nice purpose. And, and even though they are a little bit different, I can definitely appreciate, uh, especially this, this sentiment with you have to sacrifice some to gain something else. And mm. I think it's, uh, and with this one, with the woman, women, womanhood. womanhood related stuff, mm. it's, uh, and the cuts uh, back and forth and stuff. I think it's... Um, yeah, the way they're structuring these episodes so far is, is actually pretty, pretty good. Like, it can they can come off a bit as standalone in 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 a sense um some of it uh you know with with Geralt's storyline and, and now Yennefer's storyline where they're jumping way more back and forth in time whereas series storyline is more we're following it chronologically um pretty much like from episode to episode uh but it, it gives them the opportunity to play around with themes like this, um, at least, and, and make more, like, make each episode more thematic in that way. But let's quickly get into Geralt's story a little bit before we move on to all the, the book comparisons and, and stuff. Uh, I just think it's so hard to talk about that yeah, it's, without it's, getting into That's it. why I said a little bit. We'll talk about a little bit and then we'll get more into to the comparisons there. Um, but I thought it was it was very entertaining in, in the sense that we got a lot more side characters and we got a look into uh, how people from Skellige behave and we got uh, some Nilfgaardians there. We saw them being treated very badly <laughs> by um, by Galantha and that's we know that's going to kind of bite her in the ass later on. Um, we got Mouse Sack back. Uh, that was nice. Mouse I actually Sack. really enjoy his character. And in, yeah. in this one, he was very jolly and, and yeah. like he, he was genuinely happy to see Geralt. And I, I like when people are, you know, genuinely happy to see Geralt and just because of who he is and, and their friendship. And yeah. So so I, I like that camaraderie stuff going on there. And, and then we got some more Yaskia. Yeah. Uh, a bit more in, at the start of the episode, because um, he was kind of like Geralt's ticket to into this event. But I, 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 I really enjoy the actor who's playing him. I actually think he's doing a really good job uh, so far, and, and he's just conveying this bard, this... Yeah, this yeah, he's just doing such a good job and he's so entertaining in yeah. the way he does it. But I think it's very hard to mess up Dan the Lion because he's such a funny character in mm. in general cuz Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's um he's real special mm. and I think we all have a friend like that. So that's why it's so easy to relate to him, I think, yeah, yeah. somehow. Because I think everybody has, like, that peacock friend that is uh, all over the place. And yeah, yeah. It can be very annoying and very taxing and very... Uh, can be a lot um, a lot of the time. But 
who's also very, very entertaining and just spring, bring some sort of spice into your life that you didn't know you wanted and probably do not want most of the time, but it's there and it's <laughs> going to take you places. So yeah. I, yeah, I, I like his involvement so far. Definitely. Um, but yeah, it, it's really hard to talk about it without getting into the spoilers. So we're going to move on now to the second part of our little discussion oh, I here. Was just gonna, I was just going to say something. Oh, sorry, sorry. A quick thing first, and then we'll move on. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's very apparent from this episode that I think that Henry Cavill, by this point, is starting to get more into the character oh, of Geralt. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I think it was very enjoyable, because I think he did a very good job here as portraying, portraying Geralt. Yeah. Yes, he's getting a real handle on, on, on the character and just the way he's talking mimicking using every like using his facial expressions or not and yeah it's just, he's finding he's a real good he's finding good balance at least yeah and i just want to say because people have been a little bit um i think they misunderstood some of the things i've said in the last some, couple of reactions yeah because yeah. um of course uh Gerald is able to feel things and have emotions of and course. stuff because he's a witcher. He's still a human being. He's not a monster. He's not a robot. He's not. Of course, he's able to feel things, mm. but the way he is supposed to uh, convey these yeah, feelings, yeah, they um, because it's also easier uh, to keep out of human stuff if you don't have to, you know, portray or you know, like uh, convey your feelings, and mm. it's easier to. Uh, wrap your head around stuff if you don't if you're not emotionally invested mm. too much at yeah. least. And someone said in the comments with the uh, the fight with the to uh, talk the villain that in the books I think it was uh, that he's very he's very angry at himself for actually letting his emotions spill over because he's probably uh, trained to hide his feelings and try uh, trained to uh, put a lit on it and people it's he they are conveyed as these uh emotionless um creatures and that's why he's so it's it makes it so powerful when he's actually able to convey just a slightly subtle hint of emotion in the way he's talking and speaking and all of these things and that's what is why it's, his story is so powerful because they are told as being emotionless merciless um they're just like in it for the coin that's it. yeah and like monsters they're just like uh f people bred for this kind of thing so they can just uh they are unempathetic unsympathetic mm. and i always thought that the witches that we uh we learn to know are often even more empathetic and sympathetic than some of the people we meet like the human beings and i think that's why it's so powerful to me mm. so his his feelings when they then i don't think of course he's he's feeling stuff i never said that he was not feeling stuff it's the way he he's conveying them and the small subtle hints of emotion and it's very very hard i can imagine as an actor especially a theatrically trained actor to only convey subtle emotion in the way you speak and act and everything but i think he really nailed this in in this one mm. i really think he did a good good job yep couldn't agree more it's, uh, yeah it's very uh a very enjoyable lead to follow so far in this series <clears throat> yes as Geralt should be he's a, he's an amazing character so yeah yes okay let's move on to uh some of the more Book related stuff and, uh, and the comparisons. Yes. So, and there's a lot um, with with Geralt's story. It was actually very close to to what I remember, what I envisioned a lot of the time. Um, maybe with the exception of the portrayal of Calantha. Yeah. Um, she's a. I understand what they're trying to do here um, mm -hmm. with her character, especially because she was on the battlefield and she was very much a warrior type queen in the first episode, as we saw her, and they're following up on that in this one. But I'm just afraid it's going to come off too manly in a way, if you know what, like, 
it's just it can be a bit frustrating to see when studios and and like if they tr- want to make a woman character come off as more of a badass then they and powerful tr- and powerful and... then they give her like manly qualities in a way or or stuff that would normally be badass for a male character to do let's just give that to a woman then she'll be badass but that's kind of a misconception um, at least if you you ask us Um, at least for for my sake uh mm. the people i look up to uh the women i look up to are not necessarily uh badass because they do the things that guys do Mm. i think um and that's why I'm a little bit sad about the way they portray Calamity, that she's a warrior queen or whatever. It's the... Because f- in the books, at least, mm. I got this feeling that she's very stern and she's very strict and she's very no-nonsense. And mm. she, she does not have fun, like, ever. She's... Mm. Um, and 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 that's fine, because I think I, I enjoyed her character a lot. And, of course, she's uh, when she needs to be strategic and when she needs to win a war, she mm. can. Mm. But when she's not, she's this very... Um, she's still... She, I don't think she would come to a banquet, like, straight out of just murdering people and then just come in and I'm just going to go uh, go redress and blah, 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 and... Yeah, she was. She was almost like if farting loudly and spitting on the floor before she was doing. I just, I don't know. I just, I, f- I felt like if this yeah. portrayal was not exactly on you, point, you, and she was almost she was sassy in in a in a in a sassy way instead of being snarky, like uh, like being. I don't know. It's it's she. Uh, There's something off. Yeah, it, it's not that it it's totally ruining the experience or anything from us uh, for us. It's the, don't take it that way at all. It, she's the actress who's portraying her is still doing a, a good job and is still a very interesting character. It's just that a couple of times throughout this episode, at least, um, it just the the way that I understood her from from the book material at least is that people respect her because she's very stern and she knows what she wants. Um, and she tells it like it is and people she's not used to people telling her like things as as they are um in in the same way and being direct with her and that's why she kind of takes a liking to Gerald and she's interested in him so she wants him at the head of a head of the table as it happened in this episode and asks him a lot about what he's doing and his view on the world and stuff um but she's also very stubborn. I do think they got that part of her right. Definitely. Yeah, she's yeah. very stubborn. She's very set in her ways. Yeah. And like, I've made my mind up about this. So this is how it's going to happen. And this destiny crap, it's bullshit. Mm. Um, it's gonna Something real big is going to happen to convince me. And then mm. something happened and it convinces her, yeah. thankfully. And uh, she's able to actually um, adapt. Even though it's very hard for her, at least. Yes, but yes. She's, and that's why it's, it's once again, that's why it's so powerful. Because mm. she's so stubborn and set in her ways. And suddenly something very huge hap- happens to her and mm. or around her. And then she's kind of like, oh my... Yeah, yeah. Her, her worldview kind of shifts a little bit there. Um, and, and even in regards to herself. And because she's been turning down uh, Iced for like... Uh, I don't know how many years, but he, apparently he proposed to her like three times. This was the fourth fourth time, and mm. she she finally gave in. And this was the way that she could get an alliance with Skellige, and 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 um, Pavetta could still be with the person that she loved, um, Dooney. Uh, and I, I I think they did a good job with that character as well. Yeah. Like he's he looked exactly like how I envisioned from right. from the books. Yeah. Definitely, and and the guy who played him too did a real good job with it. So, and I was afraid that this episode was gonna be a bit because it is, even reading it, everything that goes down in this courtroom, it can be a bit messy, and you can be a bit like, whoa, so what's going on? Who's doing what to whom? Who's on whose side now? Yeah. Um, but that whole confusion, it also it it adds to the story and to like the events of what's going on here and yeah. and why. 
characters are changing their minds and stuff. Uh, yeah. So I think they conveyed that beautifully in this episode. Yeah, but one thing um, in the books, I remember something that um, there is like this weird. Uh, sense or like this weird feeling no i don't know how to explain it that's like this weird atmosphere in the room yeah that gerald picks up on yeah both, yes, both with, him with and, 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 and no 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 and, but and, he, and, him and, and i think mouse as well yes they talk about it yeah but they not they don't really talk about it because they kind of they are getting like a connection and like something mm. is definitely wrong yeah, and then yeah. they start they actually start uh, oh yeah that's through right the, through the uh, uh, plates they oh, start to yeah. uh, write in the plates with magic and then they yeah, yeah. They with, are with the food yeah. yeah and they do that uh, because they're very they place very far apart in the room and mm. I just think it was a little bit sad because then we get this hint that something is off something is definitely off with mm. this yeah and we. Something but, something weird is gonna go down. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, they, it's this atmosphere, and it's like mm. I even think that it has. They have some sort of. Uh, there's some sort of greenness to. It. I don't know how to explain it. But greenness. Some, something greenness about to, and and then. I don't. I have no idea what you mean about that. No, it's uh, <laughs> it's very hard to explain. But it's like this atmosphere. It's like this. It's so tense with something off. Yeah, something. And we find out it's magic. And we found out find out it's the magic that is um, a part of Pavetta, a and, part and, of Pavetta. and that bloodline. Um, yeah, it's a power of Laridoran. Mm. Uh, wasn't that his name, Laridoran? Um, anyway, so when Pavetta goes completely amok, it's mm. like everything starts to swirl, and it starts to swirl green, and mm. that's the thing. This whole force thing is green. It's, mm. it's uh, it described as something green in the books. Mm. And I just kind of missed that a little bit. And I kind of missed that because uh, I think it was not... Um, we need to understand that this is very powerful, so powerful that when it takes over, mm. it's dangerous for everyone ar around. And that's why Geralt and Mausak are trying to uh, kind of... Um, diffuse the, diffuse the situation. Yeah. Exactly, because... I don't think they portrayed that very well. That it's so dangerous, this because actually, I think when it was I going down, like it did seem very dangerous. Yeah, yeah, but it's. I think, but then suddenly she starts speaking Ilda, and uh, mm. and she's. They are just standing there in that whole love thing, and I think that was a little bit too romantic, um, because the way I remember it is that she's she's just yelling and she's screaming, mm. and she's just in that in like that catatonic state of screaming and everything is just being pulled apart around them and that's why they have to stop her mm. and there's no such cute little embrace or anything it's just Pavetta going full blown mental and relax I'm sorry <laughs> it's just it's just um, getting very worked up <laughs> it's sorry a... it's, I'm very passionate about this yes, 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 it's my favorite books it's... I know I know I know but yeah, I, I still think that the, the way that they chose to to do it here is is yes, it was more romantic, but it's still I still got the sense that she was somehow in a trance, and it wasn't like she still needed to snap the fuck out of it because she was everything was going crazy around her and was just only calm in the center of the storm, um, if you could say that. Well, um, but I I do get why they they wanted to really hammer in the these. Like Dooney and 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 Pavetta, they are very romantically involved here, and like they really love each other. So maybe that was a way of 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 just, you know, doubling down on that a little bit. Yeah, uh, we got introduced to um, the law of surprise that is very important in the whole uh, universe mm -hmm. of The Witcher, because we also learn a little bit about how witches come to be mm -hmm. um, because this law of surprise that is used as also very nicely um, described both of commoners but also for royalty mm. um, usually mainly commoners are sending off their children to you know somewhere else somewhere or, else yeah. yeah so so they can uh yeah. Pay a debt or, yeah, or, or exactly. something like that. So, so yeah, the law of surprise is is a very common thing. It's used, um, and people respect it, both lowborn and highborn, as mm. we saw in this one. Um, 
and actually as like in in, in the book um where we get this short story with uh Geralt and, and Calantha, they talked about it. They talked about witches and Camoran and how there are not so many witches now. Um, so Geralt claiming Law of Surprise and him knowing in the books, at least like he probably knew beforehand that um, maybe I'm going to get a child out of this and maybe that child can grow up to be a witcher because we need more. Yeah. I don't remember that was like if he said it exactly or anything like that, but that was at just... least what I thought was the reasoning behind it. Um, in this one, it was more of a fuck it. You Okay, uh, if you insist, then give me the law surprise. And then, oh, she's pregnant. Fuck. That was not what I wanted. Damn, uh, I'm now being drawn into this whole destiny thing once again. Yeah. Um, so it was. It seemed like it was more of an unwilling thing in this one, whereas in the books, there's a bit more thought behind it from Geralt's side at least. But I imagine that is how the witches they grew their numbers um, beforehand. Maybe it was by using the law of surprise as a payment thing. If the peasant that they were killing a monster for didn't have the coin or maybe it was it was okay it was, yeah. it was the primary way of getting new witches yes um and it was exactly peasants without money mm -hmm. and then they could, could give uh, a chat well when they came home and suddenly the uh, wife had another was pregnant or had another kid or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And then it was given away to the witches. And often the peasants would have one mouth less to feed. And yeah. Yeah, but it, but it did also create some not so nice stories and myths about uh, witches abducting children and, and turning them into these monster slayers were by torturing them and giving if them they, potions. If and, they even survived at all. Yeah, if they even survived at all. That's and just, unfortunately the sad... Um, that's the sad truth of yeah. uh, which your training is. Um, Not a lot come out, come yeah, out of it. If, if you do survive, um, you'll come out stronger, definitely, but... Not not all survive the trials. Yeah. And, and with Geralt, it was even harder. Yeah, and he uh, went through, like, some hardcore mutations, yeah, like and some real experiments. Yeah, th he was going through the very rough, uh, yeah, the rough treatments. Mm. And he also turned out to be a little bit stronger, a little bit faster, a little bit better at everything. Um, but yes. it, he also kind of lost a lot of pigment. And it was a small price to pay. His hair was his white. Hair and and his, yeah. Of course, the sterility, it comes as a byproduct of the whole thing. Yeah. Um, so it's the same with witches and, and sorceresses. They Yeah, but as I uh someone else also said, it's more like atrophy. So it's more like uh this powerful magic and these powerful mutations and stuff. They kind of just ruin the inside um like the uh sexual organs, the mm. internal sexual organs. Mm. Um and they just wither away and yeah. get destroyed by the powerful magic at play. So not necessarily cut out like, no, exactly. like how we saw in, in, in the last one. And that's always end. how I imagined it. It was not something that was cut out. I know I understand, uh, completely understand the sim symbolism of it. Yeah, and the way and they did it. Yeah, yeah. It yeah, and I think it was, as I said before, it was, uh, if you had to, it, it was a very nice interpretation of it, definitely. Mm. I just don't think that was the way it went down. But that doesn't mean it does. It's not great. No, no, no. Um, not at all. Yeah, and um, in the books, there's more to this law of surprise, and especially in relation to Siri. Mm -hmm. um, but I am not sure they will get into that in this uh, series as well, because they she's already at Brockle and Forest, mm. so they it means they kind of skipped a lot of things. And I kind of read that she has not met Geralt at any point yet. Um, when she's actually in the books, she met him when she was six years old. Mm. Um, and Calantha begged Geralt not to take her away. And that's, at, oh yeah, that's at what that I was, time. At that time. Uh, and that's what I wanted to say because um, it feels like in the books that he knew that Pavetta was pregnant a lot earlier 
than I think she even did herself. Um, yeah, because you can sense stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, and that's also what I wanted to say about, because that was a clear thing that I remember from the books. Like, at, as soon as he walked into the banquet hall, his medallion started humming. trembling and yeah. humming because there was like, whoa, there's some strong fucking magic here. Yeah. And then he had his little uh, conversation with Mausek with, like, by uh, making the food into letters on the plate and stuff like that, where they were both like, okay, something's off here. Something's going on. And it's magic. And it's it's magical. It's yeah. real strong magic. We don't know what it is, but just stay mm. alert. <laughs> mm. Yeah. And spoiler alert, if you didn't know already, this powerful thing that Pavetta and we also saw a glimpse of it uh, in Siri. Yes, yes. It's not, not very important. Ooh, yes. <laughs> it's very important. And that's something to do with... with um, yeah, their bloodline, uh, having elder blood. We've heard yes. about elder speech. Um, so, so, yeah. But if you are at this point in our reaction, you either don't care about spoilers or you know this already. Yes. Um, or you don't mind a little tease here and there. Um, <laughs> straight on tease. But yeah, uh, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's important. Yes. Um, yeah. And the last uh, scene for me that I at least want to mention uh, is uh, another scene with Mousesack where we... We uh, turn the clocks to uh, to present day uh, in Sintra, and we got a real gory fucking scene. You probably didn't see a lot of what happened there because it was just that was an interesting way to figure out where Siri is. Where it's like, all right, uh, you go ahead and eat some of her mother's uh, or grandmother's skin, then swallow it, and then I'll cut you open, uh, pull out your guts, and then I'll read your guts, and then we'll know where she is. That was a weird way of going about it, uh, but it it worked uh, out. They know where she is now, um, and they know not to go in there with armies, at least. Um, because the dryers are crazy effective and very, very um, friendly. Uh, they're very hostile. hostile. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So there's, there's a reason why they have survived for so long, is probably because they are like... No nonsense types where it's like, if there's a threat, we're going to fucking eliminate it before it gets out of hand. Um, stuff like that. And then yes. we got Mousesack, of course, uh, kneeling over uh, Calanthus' uh, buddy there, mm. which was which was sad. But he took something. Yeah. It, he, it, he took something from her body. What did she? It, what did he take? It kind of looked That's, like he took some of her clothes. like some Or of something his... that she had inside of her clothes, maybe... He certainly he he picked up something and, and hid it in his in his garments um, in a way, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, um, I think a little bit. I wanted to get a little bit into uh, Jennifer's character and, and the story about her. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, because we're in the spoiler section. Okay, yeah, yeah. And we I think it. this whole um, because we're kind of learning now that one of the. I'm sorry if I'm spoiling anything for you right now, but the thing that Jennifer wants the most in the world is a baby. And um, I think we're getting to, uh, with this story, we learned that she was, um, I think she was kind of realizing that right now, at this point, that the, the sacrifice she had to make was too big of, uh, too big for her. And also, that's why she wanted to save the baby because maybe that then she could have that baby and raise it. That still must own. must do something oh. to her, you know, her consciousness. Like not being able to protect the baby successfully, and the baby didn't survive. Like that, what does that do to her want? Like her desires uh, when it comes to having a child. Yeah, is she gonna be like, am I even capable? Like if I. If I even if I could bear a child, would I even be able to protect it then? Because I clearly I, I I couldn't protect this one. I don't know. Cause there's some interesting stuff there at least to delve into character wise. I think. But I think um, I think it was actually also very well portrayed because you could see uh, Jennifer at that point where um, that queen said that something about the the, the child. It you are the whole world to this child. Mm. You are everything to them. Mm. And you could almost see it in Jennifer's face right there that she was hurting so bad because she wanted that so badly. She mm. wanted a kid feeling that. And that's also going back to the talk with 
Istrid, mm. or what his name that uh, other the sorcerer. Istrid, yeah, I think. That. Istrid, yeah. He was saying, no matter how beautiful or powerful you are, you will never, ever, ever feel like you are. You deserve to be loved. Mm. You will never have that feeling. And so I think what she is uh, striving for more than anything else in this whole world is to feel that she deserve, deserves some love. Yeah. And, and the way... Unconditional she, love. Even. Exactly. Maybe even, yeah. The and only kind you, you'll get from family and, and, and kids and stuff like... And dogs. And dogs, yes. Get a dog, Yen. <laughs> well, that, so so that's just uh, I think that whole plays together and into her character, and you learn because of course this is also something that defines her character in the books as well. Mm. And I think um, it's so very nicely portrayed, and they're really trying to get this across mm. um, because I think even though uh, I understand where Yen come fr- comes from, and also with the books, I understand Yen as a character is definitely fine. I just don't like a personality. It's just, I'm sorry, I just don't. Yeah, so yeah. You can be I, Team Yen, you can be Team Triss in the games, whatever. Um, yeah, but I'm just, um, I just, I'm re- I really like what they're doing, that mm. they're so adamant and at telling Yennefer's story and actually getting some, uh, g- giving a lot of possibilities to actually sympathize with her yes. and empathize with her because i definitely um i like yennefer's character a lot more now mm. like a lot in the series yes yeah. they're doing a lot to to make her a more vulnerable character and, and for us to care about her so yeah. yeah good job there uh yeah that was it i promise <laughs> yeah and just to very quickly address uh something from uh from the last episode not going to get too much into it because Jesus Christ, some some of the stuff in the comments uh, about Triss. We've, <laughs> our surprise to seeing the character was, oh, she's in it already. She's in it in this story because she wasn't in this story in the books. That That's it. That was our big, oh, what the fuck reaction. It had absolutely nothing to do with how she looked or her race or anything, didn't even notice like and as some people pointed out in the comments there's even the whole thing about her hair color and like is she supposed to be okay in in the books in the translated english versions of the books it says that she has auburn hair or chestnut hair but apparently that's a that's not the right translation because no. in in polish she is a redhead. She's and and as Sapkowski has has even described her as being a redhead. Maybe not as like fiery red as we see in the games. That's, That's something more they of an do. aesthetic thing. Yeah, um, exactly. We just wanted to at least just clear the air here and like we don't have any problem with any like of the castings really in this series. Yes, it's 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 all about you know. Betrayal, uh, portrayal, and and how they're using the characters, uh, utilizing the characters in the stories and all that. So if there's ever anything that we really don't like, I'm sure we're gonna tell you. But this was certainly not one of them. Like we, we both enjoyed uh, seeing Triss in the last episode, even though we did not expect it. Hence our big surprise and our surprise faces when it happened. But we had like five minutes with Triss, so it's very hard to even get in. Yeah. Get a, to determine get a the character, yeah. Yes, yes, definitely. Um, definitely. But we're expecting her to come back, of course. Um, yeah, just wanted to quickly mention that because, man, some of the stuff in the comments from... Yeah, it's... Um, we deleted a lot of it, but still, some of you guys out there... Some of it was real relax. nasty. Relax. Just, yeah. <sighs> Either way. I enjoyed it. I'm looking very much forward to the rest of the series. We're halfway now. There's only four episodes left, and we're going to be churning them out quicker now that uh, Kat has finished her master Perhaps. thesis. Um, as if time allows it, uh, we'll keep you updated um, at least. So I think that's going to do it for our reaction and uh, long discussion and review of the episode. Do you have anything else you want to say before we sign off? Nope. All righty. Then uh, you can check out our full-length reactions on Patreon, as always, of course. And um, and there's nothing else to say, but thank you guys so much for watching. And we will see you 
very soon. Bye. Bye.